viewer discretion advised viewer discretion advised this is going to be a live shooting and a stabbing for those who may have seen some of the clips i think the video is going viral on social media uh so we, we got to take a look at it this there's a lot to uncover with this it's a very short clip but it's very graphic okay so this original incident occurred september 16th in Fairfax County, Virginia, involving a uh, Fairfax County police officer and uh, the suspect, a 33-year-old black female by the name of Sydney Wilson. And listen, uh, just to give you some background, she's a former W, I think, uh, basketball player. She's like 6'5", 330 pounds. And apparently she's been going through a series of mental health crises. I guess that's what's been reported. And so the police were doing a follow-up, or at least one officer was doing a follow-up in reference to a, a welfare check. I don't know the full story, but what we can do is we'll take a look at one of the clips from the news. They kind of give us a little background as to why the police have been responding so many times to her apartment. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the actual encounter. Was this situation justified? There's a lot of things that have been said as far as this obviously is racial, right? The, the suspect is black. Uh, well, but the officer is Asian, but then there's also talks of, of course, that this happens to black folks. This doesn't happen to white folks. So we're going to also cover that as well. I'm going to give you my thoughts and my opinions on that, uh, my expert opinion. And then we're also going to talk about, did the officer respond accordingly? Is this a justified shoot? What should have happened differently? Uh, and then also, what does it look like when officers are responding to these mental health crises? situations should there have been a nurse present would it have mattered all right so let's go ahead and dive into that first let's get some background on this incident and then we'll take a look at the video Hey there, Angie. This happened around 10 o'clock this morning here at this apartment and retail community on Sunrise Valley Drive in Reston. Fairfax County police say they were sent here this morning to do a welfare check on a woman in distress. We know that this woman has family and friends, and the loss of life is something that we all regret. Uh, our police officer acted valiantly. He certainly exhibited some grace under pressure. Fairfax County Police Chief Kevin Davis says he's seen the body-worn camera footage. One of his officers fatally shot a woman in the hallway outside her third-floor apartment after she cut him with a knife, after he knocked on her door to see whether she was okay. She eventually, after a couple minutes, opened the door, was um, uh, obviously armed with the knife and began attacking our police officer and slashing our police officer's face. I'll describe her physically. She's 33 years old. She's six foot five, 330 pounds. Chief Davis says Prince William County Police called them after hearing from the woman's mental health care provider who expressed concerns about her state of mind. This woman is a mental health consumer. We know that. We've interacted with her on a number of occasions this year. In fact, we interacted with her yesterday when she was yelling at a man who was walking his dog. Uh, we did not make an arrest because no crime had occurred. Police say the officer who fired his weapon multiple times here today is a veteran officer with crisis intervention training. We value life above all else, but we also value the lives of our police officers. And when our police officer is attacked by a woman with a knife, um, he has to protect himself and the community from that type of unprovoked violent attack. And our officer was the victim of an unprovoked violent attack today. Okay, so that's the background. We don't really know a lot, but what we do know is that this woman has been suffering from mental health issues for quite some time and that she also had a previous run-in with law enforcement because of her behavior, shouting and maybe acting unruly or disorderly in public, but the police found that she didn't commit any type of crime. So in reference to how this incident first started, we know that the suspect's healthcare provider was the one that contacted the police and urged them to go to the scene to check on the suspect. Okay, well, what does that look like and why did they do that? A lot of times in these cases, you guys, they will call and say, hey, listen, I have a, I have a, a patient. They sound like they are going to harm themselves or they sound like they're going to harm someone else. So please, we need to do a welfare check to make sure one, they're, they're still alive and that there are no issues. We don't know what information was given from the suspect to the healthcare provider, which made the healthcare provider want to call 
and ask for uh, 911 support. One could argue, okay, well, why didn't they just send the ambulance, right? Or why they send the police? We don't know because we don't know exactly what was said. It could have been something saying, hey, I have someone tied up. This is the situation. So we really don't know enough details to understand why the police were called specifically and then not the ambulance. But because there's a history of her mental illness, we don't know what the history is exactly. But it's not uncommon for the officers to be sent out. But in this particular case, they sent a specific type of officer. They sent an officer who was CIT trained and certified. You guys, myself as well, I've been CIT trained and I'm also certified to deal with people who are in mental health crisis. OK, it's a special unit, special training. In some cases we get sent with a nurse or behavioral health therapist. Uh, every city, every department does theirs differently. Okay. So I've, I've actually been on plenty of calls with them and I've been on plenty of calls by myself. Uh, the training does help. It does make a difference. Some would argue, okay, well, why the officer and not, again, not a medical professional. I don't know what the specifics were. So it's hard to even speculate on that. All right. Um, the benefit of the training is you basically, you handle yourself well, you know how to identify certain things, you know how to negotiate a person from harming themselves with the best of your ability, right? We know that using lethal force or any type of force is the last resort. A lot of times these officers make very good judgment calls, okay? So you heard what the, uh, the officer said as far as her stature, okay? That's also very, very relevant when breaking down this video. We're talking about someone who's six, almost six, six, 330 pounds. That's a big deal when you have somebody wielding a knife. So let's go ahead and get into the actual body cam video. And again, uh, viewer discretion advised, this is graphic content. So right here, they're going to just fast forward a little bit until we get her back to opening the door. I think like two minutes. How are you? Oh, Jesus Back up. Oh, yeah. Back up. Oh, yeah. Back up. 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 Three two two, apartment three two two, one one eight thirty, Sunrise Sunrise Valley. Okay, let's break it down. Let's talk about it. Okay, what what happened? What do we see, you guys? Immediately when the officer gets there, he's knocking on the door. He's here on a welfare check. He's trying to make contact. She opens the door and she says hello. Immediately before the officer can even explain, I guess, what his purpose there, she closed the door behind him. This is why we don't allow people to close the door in our faces while we put our foot in between the door and the and the door jam, right? Just to kind of keep that open area that, that we can see for our safety. We've seen this before. People come out with knives and guns and attack officers. In this case, that's exactly what happened. Two minutes go by. She opens the door. And then she says something and then she starts lunging with a with a forward slash. I don't know if that knife made contact with him at that moment. Um, but then you see him get distance. And from there, he arms himself. And then she's stalking him down the hallway, walking slowly. You guys, this is something out of a movie, out of a horror movie. You can't make this up. All right. Let's pull back up the actual clip um, and let's run through it. Throw it in slow motion. And that way we can kind of break down what happened as it goes by. So as we're here, he's already made the, this is going to be the second encounter. 
this is the part where she's gonna actually jump out and lunge at him. As you can see, she already has a knife in her hand, okay? Now look at the officer's position, you guys. He's resting on the, the actual door frame, you know, very little too comfortable, very lax. Um, not enough time to react, right? Not enough time to respond. This is a very, very bad position that he that he's in. Um, and this is definitely unrecommended. This isn't a recommended position to be in as an officer. Okay, so let's go forward. Unknown if she made contact with that initial slash, okay? What we see here is that he's able to gain significant amount of distance, right? And then from here, he unholsters and we should see him pointing and drawing down and she's just she's just stalking him down the hall you guys this is something out of a scary movie like i said you know where she has the the knife and she's just right and imagine again we don't know how tall he is but we know for a fact he's not six foot okay she's six five she's 330 pounds okay um and not only that, if you remember hearing from the initial playing, the initial sound, she's making these weird noises and she's also speaking and you can't understand what's actually being said. Now, I have my theory about this. I'm going to get into that after we cover this piece because um, I've seen something similar to this before in my own experience. He draws the weapon, okay? Uh, and then now what happens? Let's look how close he lets her get. Now, in this process, he's talking her, talking to her, telling her, hey, drop it, stop. You know, he's giving her commands. You know you're dealing with someone who's been diagnosed with a mental health issue. She's armed. She's already attempted. She's already attacked you with the knife. She's already shown that she's capable of carrying out the threat, the visible threat. Uh... And this is a problem as an officer. He did right. He drew his weapon. I'm going to tell you where he made his mistake. Let's keep playing. So she's she steps back. She's making some sounds. She's uttering words that can't be understood. It sounds like almost a different language or a different tongue, right? Here she goes. She's raising the knife. He's giving her commands to stop. Don't do it. You know, put it down. She's approaching. She's approaching. He has not, as you know, he hasn't fired yet. When should he have actually fired? Right here. He should have laid her out right here. And I mean that respectfully. He should have shot her right here. Or, or if he felt that confident and comfortable... He should have drew the taser and tased her from a distance. But allowing her to get that as close, you, you got to make a decision as an officer. If you feel confident that you can deliver the taser, deliver the pepper spray before they can make contact or close the distance, then do it. But if not, no, he could have in this moment, he could have prior to this, her getting this close, he could have tased her. I had a situation similar to this where I had my taser out in one hand, my left hand, and I had my hand on my gun. This was a person who was armed with a knife, yet they weren't close enough to carry out the threat. Um, they didn't display any actions that they could actually, that they were actually intending to cut me, but I was prepared to go from to left to right within a matter of seconds, right? So in this case, he has his gun out. I don't disagree with it. But here's where the problem is. She's stalking, stalking. He stopped walking back. Then he puts the gun down. Okay, again, as an officer, you have to make a decision. You know, how confident are you? How skillful are you? Are you going to try to disarm her? With, you know, are you going to put the gun up? You got to make a decision. But you, but you can't freeze. Okay, you can't freeze. Where did this officer fail at? He failed to make a decision, a decisive one. Okay, you're either going to disarm her, you're either going to use a non-lethal or use lethal, but you got to make a decision. If you don't, you're going to get hurt. Um, and what happened? The officer got hurt, could have been killed. And he allows her to what? 
Look how quickly she closed that distance. She was able to lunge at him. And I believe this is when he started to actually fire. One, that was one shot directly to the chest. And here's another thing, too. When people talk about, oh, you know, the officer shot eight times or so many times. You guys, unfortunately, when, when depending on where you shoot someone, they don't always respond right away. We are taught to shoot until the threat has stopped. Okay, he just fired one shot. Definitely, it was, it was towards her chest. But guess what? That didn't stop her. What do we see? We see another attack with the knife. One, he's trying to block with his hand. Two again, he can't. It doesn't even look like he even got a shot off again yet. And he's shooting and he's retreating. He's already bleeding. You can start to see the blood dripping through the camera. I mean, coming down from the camera. He's already bleeding at this point. So she's 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 managed to, she's been attacking. Obviously, he's shooting at this point until he gets just enough distance where he's actually going to um, shoot a few more times. And then she's, she's actually stopped. Again. And then, um, and then she, she drops. So, um, the officer, um, you know, he put himself, he definitely put himself in harm's way. He definitely showed restraint to a level that nearly costed him his life. Again, you, you have to be able to make the split second decision. The moment she attacked, honestly, as I'm backing up, the moment she kept closing that distance, you guys, I would have made a decision. Do I feel comfortable where I can use a taser? Or I'm looking at her clothing. Am I going to be able to, is the taser going to work through that clothing? She has a thick robe on. What's the likelihood that those prongs are going to successfully go in and do its job properly? Uh, and it's, and a lot of times it's best to get them in the back because you have more muscles that, and it's an easier target with the torso. So there's a good chance that the, the taser would have been extremely ineffective. All right. In this scenario. And then by the time you release that taser, she's charging. It's not working. You have to go to the gun anyways. Right. So um, in that situation, you have to be able to process all that within a matter of seconds. Taser. No, doesn't look good. I'm going to just use the gun and I'm going to go ahead and discharge these rounds and I'm going to shoot until the threat is eliminated. Right. And so a uh, very, very intense situation. Um, grateful that the officer is safe. He suffered from, uh, I believe, a few slashes to the face, but he is alive, recovering. Um, very tragic situation. Unfortunately, you, you can't attack an officer with a knife or a weapon. Um, very sad, tragic situation because two lives are affected, right? We have the suspect who, who passed away. She passed away, leaving behind family and friends. So, uh, that's a very tragic situation that we have the officer going through what he went through as well. Very tragic for his family and even for the officer. So um, that leads us to the next piece uh, in this discussion that we have to talk about, because online, the reason what made me want to cover this as well is a couple of things. One, race is always brought up in this when it comes to police shootings and things like that. Or if any time a black person gets killed by the police, all of a sudden, somehow we have to tie racism into it. In this case, you guys, to be quite honest, this was a justified shooting. But the officer should have shot a lot sooner, way sooner. And he could have got himself killed. Textbook justified shooting. Another thing people bring up is that this doesn't happen to white people. I assure you, white people with knives get shot all the time. Okay, all the time. Um, I'm not even going to go over the data but yes, it does happen. And for those who are unbelievers, I'll show you a quick clip uh, just so we can put that to bed. Um, next thing. What are my thoughts behind this? I've had similar case. I've done I've dealt with plenty of mental health cases. Here's my theory. And I'm just being completely honest. We just in those signs and the times situations that we're going to start seeing a lot more of these situations. In my personal opinion, I've seen plenty of cases of people who have been labeled to be mental health issues. And in my personal opinion, they are possessed, right? They are demonically possessed. Those who believe or don't believe, bless your heart, okay? I'm not here to turn you into a believer. What I will tell you is that from what I've seen, 
every mental health case is not a mental health case. Okay, there are a lot of mental health cases out here who've been labeled that way, but these people are suffering from demonic oppression. Okay, i.e., possessed. In this particular case, I'm not gonna lie. This looks like a person who was possessed by a damn spirit, demon. Okay, the words that were coming out, the the words at the end, just just the mannerisms. I've seen it. I've seen it. Okay, I wrestled with people like this. Uh, they weren't armed. Uh, I have dealt with people who were armed, and I've dealt with people who appeared to have some mental issues. I'm not gonna lie. But this right here, you guys, this looks like demonic possession. And I think we don't talk enough about that, especially from law, a law enforcement perspective. I know a lot of y'all seen some stuff. I've seen plenty of stuff I haven't even shared on this channel yet. And uh, it's just not a space to do it. But I'm going to start talking more about it, especially when I see these things actually take place. Um, and what does that look like? Right. What does that look like? You guys, you'll be surprised. I've come across witches, warlocks. I've come across, again, people who've been possessed, uh, people who try to put curses on people, people who who uh, did voodoo on someone next door living. And these people call the police, you guys. We've seen a lot. And I'm definitely going to start talking more about it because I just think we're in those times. And I believe we're going to see a lot more people where these demons manifest out of them and they're going to be clashing with the public okay so um why is this important to talk about because what i've noticed and experienced i've seen a lot of people who you know we look at these folks and this is a beautiful lady all right a tragedy okay but here's the thing there are people who live lives you guys that you know we think it's a fairy tale we think the things that they do is just kind of like hopeful and you know uh, sprinkling fairy dust, okay? But there's people out here grinding stones and praying the moons, and they're doing all type of stuff inside the house, okay? I've been in hundreds of homes. I've seen a lot of stuff. And I just think that we're at a time where people are gonna, these things are gonna start manifesting out of people because they're out here playing with stuff that they don't really understand or they do understand. And then they get they get taken over, okay? So this is a real, real thing. And, and we don't know, I'm not claiming that she's, she messed around with stuff or whatever, but I'm just saying I've been in people's homes. I've seen their crystals. I've seen their powders. I've seen their little books, their notes. I've seen the stuff they have on their walls and I see their tattoos. OK, and so for those who know, know. And these things, you, you talk to them about little episodes they have and they describe certain things. And it's like, OK, for those who have ears to hear. So listen, just be mindful. I think things are going to start manifesting um, and this particular situation, it just looks like demonic possession. Um, couldn't understand the language that she was speaking, the tongue that she was using. And yeah, I can, I can only imagine. I'm curious to know what, obviously we can't get access to uh, anything from her healthcare provider, but I'm curious to know what type of things she was saying or seeing. And I guarantee you it's going to align somehow spiritually or biblically with with, you know, some type of demonic creatures, angel, angelic creatures, dark figures and things of that nature. I've seen it all too often. And I know there are other officers who can attest to this because we we've just seen too much, you guys. So anyways, um, tragic situation. I'm glad the officer is safe. God bless uh, him and his family. Sorry for the for the loss um as well um from the suspect again at the end of the day no one wishes to harm anybody right so this is a very tragic situation across the board is this justified absolutely 100 percent. is this racist absolutely not please let that go um and what else the officer did his best to try to preserve life even at the cost of his own almost so uh shout out to that officer we're just giving our honest critique of the situation any questions and comments please leave below you guys with your thoughts i want to know what you think about the whole case even the theory of it being possibly a demonic possession situation but anyways let me know your thoughts below like comment share subscribe join the channel love to have your part and with that good night and god bless